All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started today. Hello and welcome everyone. I am Dr. Haley Nelson, a pediatrician at Valley Children's Hospital and with Safe Kids Central California to talk to you about a topic that is trending right now. Unfortunately, not in a good way. So we are here to discuss vaping. And to learn a little bit more about the dangers of youth vaping, I invited two of my good friends. Um, so I have Dr. Andrew Kim and Dr. Chloe Kalian. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about why they chose to come on our show today. Right, guys, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Dr. Nelson. I'm Dr. Kapalian. I'm one of the pediatric resident physicians, and I've taken care of a number of patients who have vaped and used e-cigarettes. So I'm very passionate about talking about this topic and advocating for the safety of our patients. So thank you for having me. So glad to and have I'm you. And Dr. Dr. Andrew Kim. Kim. I'm a pediatric intensivist. Oh, hey, sorry. Hey, I'm, I'm Dr. Andrew Kim. I'm a, a pediatric intensivist here at Valley Children's Hospital. And so I take care of the sickest of the sick patients um, just in the whole Central Valley actually. And um, the reason I want to talk about this is because I do see patients in the pediatric ICU with vaping, and I wanted to share this information so that uh, hopefully I don't have to see other children end up in the pediatric ICU. Awesome. I'm so glad that we have you guys as our experts today. So to kind of get started, uh, Dr. Kapalian, can you explain what is vaping? Like, what does this look like so that parents kind of know what we're talking about when you hear that word? Sure. So vaping is the process of using electronic cigarettes or e-cigarettes, and uh, it's a battery operated device and it contains a mouthpiece and the person uses that to smoke. And each device contains a cartridge and it can be filled with liquid and this liquid often contains nicotine. It can also contain THC and other very harmful chemicals. And it's really appealing to our patient population and youth in general, because as you can see on the screen, it comes in many different shapes and sizes. There are many different colors and oftentimes um, it can be disguised as other common objects. So it can be easily hidden, which makes it appealing. And uh, the tobacco companies really target this population because these chemicals can actually be flavored and they come up with um, very interesting names. So it makes it sound appealing. So it's very dangerous and um, has a lot of potential to be addictive as well. Yeah, so they really, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. And as you said, even um, sometimes they can be hidden and small and look like a jump drive. They can look like something else. And so it makes it a lot harder to realize that perhaps that's something um, that your child or their friend has. And so to be able to intervene, just kind of knowing what to be um, on the look for. Exactly. And then uh, Dr. Kim, can you tell us a little bit more, like how common is this? How many teens are using vape um, kind of products right now? So it's actually a lot more common than you, you would think, right? Um, I, when I was growing up, obviously did not hit vaping or anything like that. Didn't realize it was that big of an issue until recently, right? Um, but about a million teenagers use them every single day. And about 27% of all high schoolers have actually vaped one time in the past. And I think there's about 5 million middle school or high school students that have used in the last 30 days. So I think it's just really interesting because it's a huge problem that's out there. And I think it's like underappreciated. Like we don't realize how big an issue it really is. And so we just really want to share more about how prevalent it is. Wow. So one in four, essentially, it's 27% of high school students. That's, that's huge numbers. I'm thinking about kind of just I'm looking at our teenage population. And so um, it is, it's more common than what I realized even. So I'm glad that we're, we're here and talking about it. Now, um, so Dr. Kupalian, can you tell us like, how do kids actually get into trouble with this? Like, what's the problem with it? Right, so the, the liquid that is contained in the e-cigarette contains really harmful chemicals and when it's inhaled, it can cause some changes in the lungs and it can be very damaging. It can impact the way you breathe. It can increase your risk for infections. And to give you an example, there's one uh, brand that's called Juul and one cartridge itself is equivalent to about 20 cigarettes. So as you can imagine, if someone wow. is sitting there smoking multiple times in one sitting, that's like having a pack of cigarettes. And that's just with one cartridge. 
So it's very harmful. And there have actually been many studies that have shown that teenagers or children who start vaping have actually an increased risk of using other tobacco based products. So in a sense, it almost acts like a gateway drug. Yeah, certainly if you're getting 20 cigarettes in one use that starts that addiction pretty hard and then early on. And so trying to um, be very aware of that. And I understand um, not only does it have the tobacco, but that sometimes they're laced with other products too. So Dr. Kim, how often are kids kind of coming into the hospital? When, when are you seeing this in your practice? So it sounds silly because I'm spewing out all these stats, right? Um, but, you know, since like February of last year, there's been about 2,807 2, um, hospitalized cases and 68 deaths. Um, and there's about 5,000 children that get ER treatment for just exposure to like e-liquid between 2013 and 2017. Um, but the thing is like the effects can be really devastating overall. Um, like I mentioned before, I work in the pediatric ICU and I've seen kids that have injury to their lung. Um, they need breathing machines, breathing tubes. You know, they get really sick. I can even see them get sick enough to the point of needing a heart and lung machine, which is probably the most support that we can do in the pediatric ICU. And they get, um, because of the contaminants that you guys had mentioned before, um, you can actually end up having really significant infections um, that can take over your lungs. And we've even seen children in our pediatric ICU die from vaping. Wow. So, I mean, it, this is not a benign thing that is out there. It is common um, and it really can hurt our children. Um, now, Dr. Kupelian, going back to you for kind of talking about the, the risks, and I've, I've heard parents say, oh, well, if I use an e-cigarette, like I'm not exposing my child to smoke. Mm -hmm. And so I know that there's that piece of cigarettes that people feel like, oh, if I just smoke away from my child or, um, you know, if I'm vaping, that then maybe that way I'm not going to harm my child. But I understand that the devices themselves, so outside of the liquid in them, which we've said is bad and children ingested and things happen. But um, what about those devices? Is that better? Like kind of tell me what your thoughts are there. Yeah, so the not only, like you mentioned, are the liquid and the substance within them dangerous, but the device itself actually contains lithium batteries. And so if someone were to carry it in their pocket with the batteries contained in the device, it can actually cause a fire or an explosion. So the device itself, even without using it, is dangerous. And like you mentioned earlier, we see a lot of emergency room visits of young children who think the liquid is juice or candy and they often ingest them and they can get an overdose or nicotine poisoning or THC toxicity. So it is very scary and it is very real and it not only impacts our teenage population but it can also potentially impact our young children as well. Thank you. And Dr. Kim, what do you recommend for parents? So how do we, if this is such a common issue, but yet um, has really detrimental effects on our, the health of your child, they can end up in the ICU, like you said, a heart and lung, you know, machines, like this is, this is bad. So how do we talk to our kids? Like what, what would you want to tell parents about vaping? I think it's really important to just have an honest, open conversation with your children. Um, I think a lot of people like adults, children don't realize how dangerous that vaping is, right? And I think it's important to just kind of state the facts like, hey, vaping, even though it may seem, you know, people may say it's safer than cigarettes or other things, there's serious complications that can happen with it. And just um, making sure that you're aware and that your child is aware that of what the, the complications are overall. Um, and I think just don't have judgment on your children. Um, teenagers don't like that, right? Like they want to want to know that they're doing everything okay. Um, and just be honest with them and say like, hey, I'm really worried about you. Um, please take care of yourself. This can have serious um, effects on you, not just now, but later in life as well. All good tips. Thank you both for, for being here today. Any other uh, closing comments before we go to our wrap up slides? 
Just to echo what Dr. Kim said, I think um, especially as young physicians and being part of the residency program, it's mm -hmm. super important to keep a non-judgmental attitude and being able to connect with your patients and provide them resources for overcoming maybe their addiction with vaping or what others have told them at school and the peer pressuring and bullying component that comes along with that. Um, it's important to know the resources that you have in your community and both on a national level to try to advocate for their safety and overall health. Right. Thank you, Dr. Kapelian. We'll include some links for families um, after this video down below. So healthychildren.org is actually the website from the American Academy of Pediatrics and has great tips um, for parents as well as for teens. And so they do have some articles about vaping. So we'll make sure to include that for you today. In wrapping up, just kind of in our discussion about vaping, we've discussed that um, it comes in different flavors and that can be really appealing to children, which has been dangerous. So if young children um, consume that because they think that it's candy, that we're seeing a lot of adolescents using these and that unfortunately it contains as much as 20 cigarettes in one packet. So that's really where um, the danger lies and that you're introducing yourself to an addictive substance at a very large number without um, realizing it. And that this really can be harmful for brain development. So we want you to be smart and we want to help you so that your brain has time to grow and develop. And nicotine also has other um, addictive properties that then can make you possibly prone to other drugs. So uh, it's highly addictive substances. And just uh, I hope that you have learned from our experts today. If you have questions, you can always send them along to us at Safe Kids Central California. So we're happy to hear what questions and comments you have, not only about vaping, but any of the other topics that we have covered through our lunch and learn sessions. We have more coming at you. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing water safety, heat strokes, lots of different other fun summer topics coming up next month. But thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope everyone you stay safe and be well. Thank you. Thank you.